Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Dr. Muhammad Usman Yusuf. I am an immunologist, but I'm specialized in allergy and asthma. And because of my interest in asthma, my uh, focus is always on different types of illnesses which aggravate respiratory problems. Um, because of this, we monitor seasonal variations in different types of, uh, in different weathers. And that's why in 2008, we saw changing weather patterns and a couple of, and about six months later, it was discovered that there's a new virus called the swine flu virus. In 2012, we looked at changing weather patterns in the Middle East and we published a paper about the different, um, the expectation of a new viral, uh, virus infection coming in and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome emerged about a couple of months later. Again, this year we've seen that it was a very harsh summer and a very cold winter, so uh, we were fearing seeing different types of uh, respiratory illnesses. And since about uh, the end of September or early October 2019, we've been seeing a lot of different presentations of viral infections coming in, which are affecting the lungs as well as the upper respiratory passages with coughing and pain in the chest, difficulty in breathing. And then later on, it was discovered that there's a new viral strain called um, the COVID-19, which is a more aggressive form of the common cold virus, which is also a coronavirus. We do not really know whether the infections that we've been seeing in Pakistan in these earlier months was the same or was it a different pattern? There's no way of knowing that. But I'd like to share with you in today's video our treatment plans by which we've been getting, by the grace of God, almost 100% success in, in managing these viral infections. Um, we are more concerned about influenza viruses because those affect this part of the population a lot. As you know, that there's been over 55 to 60 million people infected by uh, influenza viruses just this season from October 2019 till now which is far more than the coronaviruses. But again, the number of deaths now is about equal in both, ranging between 60 to 70,000 people worldwide, which is a very, very dangerous amount, uh, where a large number is something to be concerned about. The reason I'm putting this video up is that we have some very simple, basic preventative measures which really work. And those are what I'd like to share with you and we've been sharing with our patients for the last 25 years or so and gaining a lot of success. The first thing, especially with coronaviruses or the present COVID-19 virus, like influenza viruses, is how do they spread? Of course, we all know that viruses do spread by droplet infection, which is if someone comes and sneezing, sneezes or coughs in your face, you're likely to inhale those particles and those can cause disease. But more important to that, this is your main culprit. And this culprit is what is going to be the main uh, vehicle of transmission of disease from one person to another. Now, hands have to be kept clean. The best way to kill a virus is to apply any detergent, soap, soap or water or anything else that you have which can actually break down the outer membrane of the virus and when it does that once the outer membrane is broken down the virus will not be able to become infective anymore so when you wash your hands it requires at least 20 to 25 seconds for the soap to actually penetrate and break down virus infections now when you wash your hands, you must have seen umpteen videos on this. Remember that this place inside the nails is also a big reservoir for viral infections. This is with what you'll be scratching your face. You don't scratch your face like this. This is with what you'll be opening the, the lid of something or something. These places are also to be washed. The other very important place is this part, the, doors, the, the front of the wrists because this is what you're going to be resting on a table where someone may have sneezed before you, someone may have cleaned his nose and put his hands 
and this is what is going to get you infected. So whenever you wash your hands, make sure that you include the wrists as well. You wash well for at least 20, 25, even 30 seconds or more. You don't have to waste water by leaving the tap running. Just put a lot of soap, rub it, and then just wash it off later. Even if you're going to use hand sanitizers, people put a tiny drop of sanitizer and wash their hands. No, you're supposed to put a lot of sanitizer, enough to really make your hands wet, and, and you can actually get everything cleaned up and make sure that you've got every single point including the nails remember the inside of the nails and i let my nails grow specifically for this video but normally i don't keep them so so long anyway so once you've done this this is very important whenever you're coming indoors from outside wash your face with soap and water because the place where the virus is going to enter into your system is either through the nostrils through your mouth or palate or from your eyes through the nasal or through the um, uh, nasal lacrimal duct it will go into the nose so these are the places which have to be kept clean that's one thing the second thing which is very very important whenever you've gone outdoors remember you might be walking on a place which was infected and you're going to bring viruses into your home so the easiest way of doing that rather than coming home and cleaning your shoes is just to take a little shopping bag or a plastic bag, put it on top of your shoes when you go out. And when you're coming in, remember to put your hand on the inside and peel it off like you take off the sock so that the inside goes out and the outside goes in. Wrap it up and throw it away so that you have cleaned your shoes as well and you're not bringing infection indoors. The other thing, you've got masks. Masks are a very important way of preventing viral transmissions both ways. You're not going to wear a mask only to protect yourself. You have to wear a mask to protect other people as well in case you're infected and you don't know it. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about the N95 mask, which filters 95% of the virus particles, etc., etc. But what about the 5% that you miss? And what about the points? If you don't know how to wear a mask properly or take it off, you're probably going to touch your face when taking off the mask or putting it on and you're actually going to infect yourself more. So remember that whenever you wear a mask or you take it, I mean, after you've taken it off, you must wash your face. Masks, anything that you have is going to work, whether you have a small filter foam mask, whether you have a, a double-sided cloth mask, they're all going to be protective to some degree or the other. If you don't have anything, then just take a simple sheet of paper and fold it into three and staple a rubber band on the side and you end up with something like this with two rubber bands and you can always put those and that at least even if it does not protect you, you're still going to get stuff on the side but it's protecting you from a direct inhalation. And in case you cough or you sneeze, it has protected the person in front of you from getting infected. And you're not going to spray all the infection onto your table. It's going to stay in there and you all when you come home, all you do is you take it off and you throw it away without touching the inner surface or even the outer surface. So, so these are simple steps which you must sort of carry out. But... What if you have gotten infected? What if you are, you have breathed in something which may be infectious? The most important way of getting rid of that is washing it out. Now, two very powerful disinfectants which actually kill viruses, one's chlorine, the other is alcohol. Chlorine in normal bleach, you can make it as a cleaning solution by putting two heaped teaspoonfuls of bleaching powder into a jug of water, and that will make about 5 to 10 percent bleach solution, which you can use to disinfect surfaces. But if it falls in your clothes, then obviously you know it's going to bleach and the color is going to go off and your clothes will get spoiled. And you cannot put that inside your nose either. There is a very specific um, uh, swimming pool grade bleach but that's the ones they use in swimming pool you can't use those at home so your next best bet is to take warm salt water 
warmth will kill the virus if it's more than 37 degrees centigrade and put salt into it. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to wash your nostrils in such a way that you put water in from one side, let it flow out from the other, put it in from the other side. So you can take a normal syringe, fill it up with water, go in front of a sink. As you push the water in, it'll come out from the other side. It feels so good. Don't inhale it in. Then fill it up again, do the other side, clean your nose. If you don't have that, you can get the sinus wash bottles in the market, which you fill up with water, put in the special salt, which is basically sea salt, a preservative free salt. Don't use iodized salt because that burns inside. And you can add in baking soda to neutralize the, the acidity. Put it in from one side, let it wash out from the other, put it in from the other, wash out from the first. It won't go into your lungs because it'll go at the most to the pharynx, pharynx, which is where you drink water from. If you have nothing else, then honestly, you can just take a simple teapot and, you know, fill it up with water, put it in from one side, let it drain out from the other, do it from the other side. Anything, just use your common sense to wash your nostrils out. Once you've done that, take warm salt water and gargle. Now, the trick of this is because viruses replicate in two to four hours and it takes even allergens like pollen and dust to, to go and stick to the nasal mucosa and start acting in two to four hours or more, you have to do this washing at least four times a day. People just do it once or twice, that's not enough. It's like having to keep your gate locked all the time to prevent someone from coming in, otherwise, if you open it for even an hour, there's no point because anyone can come in or go out or whatever. So you have to keep washing frequently to keep your nose and your throat clean. Once you've done that, then apply any lubricant, any natural oil, olive oil, sesame oil, um, Vaseline, paraffin, anything with your finger, wash your hands first or with a cotton swab, apply it all the way inside A, that prevents the physical sticking of virus particles and pollens and dust with the nasal mucous membrane. Secondly, some of the oils can actually, they're lipolytic and break down the, the lipids in the outer coat of the virus. So these are a few things which help. Third thing, if you think you've been infected, then steam, which is used for sterilization, is a very effective remedy. Just put a kettle on the boil or put a pot on the boil and when it's boiling, just stand in front of it. Take a few deep breaths with your nose, a few deep breaths from your mouth, 10 or 15. That works because the steam has to be actively boiling. If you just put water in a, in a vessel and come and sit in front of it, that's just vapor. The penetration of that isn't enough. So if you do your steam for about two or three minutes and you do it about five, six times a day, you're actually disinfecting to some extent a lot of your nasal passages. Uh, one more thing which I wanted to, to point out is a remedy that we've been using for about the last 20 plus years. And that's just a basic herbal remedy called Joshanda. You can buy it commercially. You can um, make it yourself. You can look it up on YouTube or Google it. Joshanda, J-O-S-H-A-N-D-A. It can come, you can get it in packets and stuff. It's basically a herbal tea, which has lots of different components. And maybe I'll do a different video on that later on. But we found that as to use it once or twice a day works excellent as a pre preventative. I mean, in my own experience, in my entire staff, in all my clinics, the minute they feel or they can smell that a patient has come in with a viral infection, as soon as the patient goes out, my staff is gonna have a tea of hot chashanda straight away. It works. And if you feel that you know, you're know you getting generalized aches, your throat is irritated, your nose is irritating, you're feeling you, know, you might be coming down with something, then you increase the chashanda to a couple of, maybe three or four, five times a day. Um, some Jashandas do contain things like ephedrine, ephedra, which is a precursor of pseudoephedrine that can push up your blood pressure, so be very careful there. Um, there's a lot of work being done on Kalonji, which is the black seed, Nigella sativa. Now, Nigella sativa is supposed to be um, 
a cure for many things. Uh, you can take it 11 or 13 little seeds in the morning with a bit of water. Some people say take it with honey. Honey is very good as an anti-allergy anyway. Um, these things have helped. Honestly, we've never done a trial, but we have done trials with Joshanda. The reason we've never published those is because the, the composition of Joshanda varies so much from packet to packet. We don't really have a yardstick to be able to measure the quality of that. So these are a few things which we've been using over the last 20, 25 years at the Allergy and Asthma Institute, Pakistan, and um, probably the things which have helped us retain our world ranking as one of the leaders in asthma care. So um, I just hope they can help you, they can help your patients. They're very simple, they're common sense precautions, and I wish you the very, very best. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay corona-free, and stay blessed. Thank you all very, very much.